If you have 10 bits and your Uncle Jimmy takes two, what do you have now? A byte? Eight bits? What if you had taken four? Well, you could still have a byte as six bits. The first time the word byte was ever used was in 1956, and it was referring to a group of six bits from internal documents and early development stages of the IBM 7030 Stretch Supercomputer, which was the world's fastest computer from 1961 to 1964. In this early computer, the technical documentation refers to any useful group of bits between 1 and 8 in size as a byte. And next comes my favorite byte size at 9 bits, which was the size of the, and I quote, IBM Big Byte. Around the 1970s, some engineers within IBM wanted to develop a computer architected with 9-bit bytes, and this was coined the IBM Big Byte. So the gist here is that a byte does not technically refer to 8 bits. It actually just refers to any group of useful bit sizes. And you may be thinking, okay, Jake, well, that's just how it used to be. See, now we've all agreed to be consistent and stick to 8-bit bytes, right? Well, not entirely. There still exists some non-8-bit byte systems out there today. Here is one now made by Texas Instruments that's a 16 bit byte defined for a digital signal processor. And here is a quote from the TI documentation website that reads, it should also be noted that contrary to common usage, a byte is not defined as 8 bits. So a byte is more like a group of cows being a herd than specifically 12 eggs being a dozen. Also, do you know why a byte is spelled byte instead of byte? Yeah, I don't either. Moving on. It's because there was fear of having a typo, where if you left off the E in byte, you'd get bit. So a message requesting a 32-byte area of memory but accidentally spelled 32-bit would cause huge issues in the world of computing. All right, enough about bytes. Well, actually there is more, but what's up with bits? See, a bit is shortening of the term binary digit coined by John Tukey at Bell Labs the lab that invented so many freaking things, including the Hello World program. You might be thinking it's the bi from binary and the t from digit, but no. It's actually the b from binary, the first i from dig, and the t from trust me bro. So bits can be represented in a few interesting ways that you might think are all electrical, but originally this was with paper, paper punch cards, and the presence or absence of a hole at a specified location in the card. These were used originally in programmable automatic looms, then in the analytical engine, which was a mechanical computer from the 1800s, and eventually used to program computers until as recently as the 1980s. There are also magnetic storages like disks and tapes where the magnetic polarities within a film represent the bits one or zero. Also, there are electrical charge bit representations in modern random access memory, where tiny semiconductors have a different level of charge for a bit zero and a bit one, that when not plugged into a power, the cells can actually retain these charges for over 10 years. So for any non-losers still hanging around, let's talk about some interesting groupings of bits. So we have a few sort of binary type coding groups that started with Braille in the 1820s using 6 bits. Then comes along the Badot code that used 5 bits in the 1870s for encoding the alphabet for transmission over the telegraph. This was invented by the dude Emil Badot, of which the baud rate for data is still used and named after. Then came ASCII, the well-known character encoding computer standard, which the committee debated between a 6-bit, 7-bit, and 8-bit standard. Even though 6 would have technically been usable, it was deemed not future-proofed, and 8 was thought to be too expensive. So they went with 7, since with 7 bits you could represent the full requirement of characters plus some. Also, if we go back in time a long while to 1944, yes, some of us were alive back then, the size of bits different computer systems were operating on were all over the place. So that 1944 EDVAC computer was commonly operating on a minimum of 44 bits at a time from memory. Uh, do I hear 4 bits now? 32 bits? Now, nah, how about 18 bits? 18 was the common readable bit size on the 1949 Ed Sack British computer. And just so you're aware, 8 bit bytes are by far the most common nowadays. And something else you should know is that most modern computers are not actually capable of reading a single bit out of memory. They must read a group of bits to operate on. Since individual bit access is technically possible, but it's complex and expensive and a feature that usually ends up not being worth it. This has been Bits and Bytes from Illogical Gates. Comment if you have any thoughts, like if you will, or subscribe. I'll see you guys at the next gate.